Sure. Um, Dave Talley. Here. Tammy McDonald. She's absent. Um, Alyssa Devon. Michael Dixon. Here. Mark Thymaster. Here. Kathleen Weigel. DeAndre Campbell. Here. We have quorum. Great. And now we'll, as tradition has it, uh, go with introductions. And we'll start down at the end with Blair. Blair Littlejohn from the Office of General Counsel. Frank Barbieri, School Board. Uh, Heather Frederick, Chief Financial Officer. Vanessa Snow, Deputy Chief. Sarah Mooney, Chief of Police for the District. Bob Bliss, Office of Inspector General. Randy Lodge, Adagi's Office. Dave Talley, Audit. <clears throat> Teresa Michael, Inspector General. Joyce Edison, IG Executive Assistant. Uh, Michael Dixon, Audit Committee. Leandre Campbell, Audit Committee. Mark Bymaster, Audit Committee. Okay, and we'll go to the back over there. Right, and over here. Well, welcome, welcome to all of you. Uh, we'll start out with, uh, I need a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Discussion, all in favor, all opposed, passed unanimously. Next, take a minute to review the minutes of the September 16th meeting, and after you've had a chance to review that, I'd accept a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Leandre second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Passed unanimously. Public comments? Hearing none, we'll go move on to the IG update. Terry? Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming here today. We are going to have a, a pretty short meeting, uh, but it's very important. We wanted to meet with the chief. Her schedule is very tight, so trying to be able to get her in here. Um, you know, I appreciate that. I know that you have a lot of things going on, especially at the beginning of school and school safety and everything, so thank you very much. And thank you so much for bringing all of your staff with you as well. A uh, couple of things I wanted to talk about. We have our annual report that each of you has received a copy. It's the same format as last year. Um, I didn't want to redo it again, so. Uh, but there is some things in there that we have updated. We have some new initiatives that are going forward, which is the CARES program, which is the centralized reporting. We also have a new inspection program that we've discussed, so that's discussed in there as well. And we also have a couple of outreach programs that we're trying to get the message of what the IG does out there. We still have people that don't understand the difference between an audit and an investigation, um, and that I get, admittedly it drives me nuts, my head pops off. Um, two different things, two completely different sets of skills, and two different outcomes. So we're working on that, and that's something that we have to do a better job of, is communicating. Uh, most of all, though, I'd appreciate the committee support. This past year has been a very good year for us. Um, a lot of work done, and we can do better, and we're going to continue to do better. But thank you very much. Would you like to uh, introduce Chief Mooney? Oh, yes, most definitely. Um, we are very fortunate to have Chief Mooney here. Chief Mooney was the West Palm Beach um, Police Department for 40, 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> Felt like it. <laughs> Most definitely. Um, I believe I, a couple of times I worked with Chief Mooney. Uh, she probably doesn't remember when I was with DJJ in the IG's office. Um, and, you know, it's never good when DJJ is involved. So, admittedly, we well, appreciate your patience with that agency. Um, but Chief Mooney, um, if you could introduce how you're doing, what your initiatives are, some of your challenges. Uh, that's, a, that's a very broad topic. <laughs> um, good morning, everybody. Thank you uh, for the opportunity to come in and meet with you. Uh, as, as you know, I am relatively new to the district. I started in May of this year, so I had the opportunity to see the end of last school year and some of the issues that the school police in particular uh, have had to deal with or continuing to deal with a little bit. 
Uh, number one priority, obviously, is going to be the safety and security of all of our campuses and facilities throughout the school district. Uh, it's a tremendous uh, responsibility for everybody that's involved in that. And when I came in, we had a lot of people that were uh, either timing out retirement-wise, that were in positions that were very instrumental in keeping the department running. Uh, some of these audit issues that, that have kind of landed on my desk as, as a result of some of the... the um, the, the audits that you all have done over the past couple of years introduced me very quickly to some of the <clears throat> some of the major issues that we're facing the department um, in in terms of processes and things that impacted not only school police but the uh, the district wide hiring of multiple different people um, the the ability to make sure that we have straight record keeping and those kinds of things I have two uh, very sharp captains that are sitting behind me that that each of them is kind of overseeing the uh, the two primary areas of these audits that I have sitting in front of me that were that were introduced to me when I came in. Uh, they've done a tremendous job of working on the recommendations and, and really cleaning up a lot of the issues that were um, presented in the audits that, that I received. Um, I, there's still work to do, but I can tell you that we've made a ton of progress. The, the fortunate or unfortunate part of some of these issues that we were dealing with has uh, is intricately um, interconnected with the HR processes. Erica Rieger started about two weeks before me, so she kind of jumped in with, with both feet too, and we've been working together to try to straighten out some of the processes that, that have impacted the overall operations at, at, the, uh, at the district. So I think we're making very good progress, especially when you talk about um, the, the backgrounds and the fingerprinting and the processes there, uh, cleaning up old records that just kind of went by the wayside, making sure that we have processes in place to move forward with making sure that the corrections are made before they are, are found in a report somewhere that we're not doing something right. Um, I, I would like to kind of say I, I'm here for questions from, from you all. If there's anything that I can answer, can answer, I'll, I'll do my best with it. I brought my best support people behind me, uh, Vanessa Snow, also new to the district with me but not new to law enforcement in, in Palm Beach County. Uh, she's, she took the place of uh, Lynn Powell, who I'm sure that I think she did the presentation last year on the initial findings for the audits. Uh, Vanessa, has she's jumped in with me and, and has been kind of my right arm on some of these projects that we're working on. Uh, and again, safety and security is always going to be our priority, having to deal with the things that are ancillary, but they're not really. The, these, are, these are very important issues that... that contribute to our ability to make sure that we are able to keep things safe and secure in the district. Um, the other two things that we really are prioritizing is customer service. Th that's very important. You got to have happy employees. You got to have happy constituents. We're working on that too. That's one of our top priorities as well as community engagement. So trying to do all these things all at once has been a little overwhelming, but I think we're making some good progress. Um, but again, I'm here to, to introduce myself, the way that we're kind of doing business now, and, and to answer any questions that you might have as to how we've progressed even since I've gotten here. So, Thank you, Chief. How about any questions uh, from, from the committee members or comments? Michael? Yeah, I'd like to make a couple maybe comments and questions. But welcome. Welcome to the uh, meeting here. Um, could you just... Give me a little background on your staff, how big it is, and what it includes with respect to like officers on the ground versus internal support staff, just so we have a feel for that, number one. We have, we're, we're slated to be able to have uh, 300 and, what is it, 27 positions. Um, we're currently about 60 positions down uh, as far as sworn law enforcement officers. So we handle 180 sites where we have to have an officer at each of those sites. In, in addition to our staffing, we have contracted out with some other local jurisdictions to ensure that we have the minimum standard, the minimum mandate of at least one sworn police officer on every campus in, in the school district. Um, in addition to having uh, supervision for those people, so we have extra bodies that are kind of floating around from school to school throughout the day to make sure that, that everything is, is being done according to what's mandatory. Over and beyond that, we have, um, we have two officers or supervisor and an officer that are working with the schools on crisis response plans. We have an officer that's assigned to internal affairs. We have uh, officers in our training division. There's, there's five in there. Um, we've, we've had some people that have left some of these positions that are critical to making sure that we do everything correctly. 
Uh, as far as our support staff, we have um, a safety and security team. They're a little understaffed, uh, but we have transitioned one of those one of those positions up to a more of a management position to where they're trying to come up with a new game plan as to how they're going to make sure that they can get the uh, security systems in the schools, keep them the maintenance plans up to speed. Uh, we've worked very closely with the, the COO, Mr. Uh, Sanchez, and his team in regards to physical security on the campuses, so it's kind of interconnected. I wouldn't say that they work for us, but we work with them, mm -hmm. so they're not under my umbrella. Uh, fingerprinting, we have just transitioned to where we're kind of a 50-50 split with the personnel with HR because we have a new process for onboarding and doing the fingerprint processing and the background checks, so we have three people that are still assigned to us that under school police that are working on um, the records regarding uh, fingerprinting. There's four new people that are in HR that are, that are working hand in hand with our fingerprint personnel. Uh, they do the badging of new employees, the background checks of the new employees, and onboarding of the new employees, in addition to working directly with HR. So the numbers are like, they, they fluctuate, mm -hmm. um, but we have, we have multiple vacancies that, that that's one of our priorities is to try to get that filled but at the same time having state mandates as to what you will have available. Uh, we've had to go to the, the, the board in order to ensure that we have people in place from outside sources to help make sure that we have those positions filled um, and so that we can work on, the, work on the recruiting efforts that we have. Thank you. I have another question for you, if I may. Sure. Um, the 180 sites? Yes. The school district provides an on-site officer at each site now? We are responsible for that. There You're are, responsible there for are, okay. Yes, there's, we have, um, at the beginning of, prior to the school year starting, I, I, I went to the board and requested, um, we, we did some projections on where we thought we were gonna have vacancies so that we could make sure that we had solid coverage. Um, and we requested a total of 45 positions daily that are from outside law enforcement agencies to help ensure that okay. we have a body at every minimum. school. Get yep. the minimum. Yes. Right. Um, the reason why I'm asking these questions is because I really don't know. Mm -hmm. And several times over the last few meetings that we've had here as a committee, um, a lot of security questions were coming up and we had discussions with no real interpretation as to what we had or what we didn't have. Um, and I'm speaking strictly as a committee person here. Um, it's all good news. That's all good news. Uh, it's not good news that you have vacancies, that's for sure, because everyone has vacancies now. It's very difficult. It's very difficult to run any type of an organization. Um, we, we have on record from maybe the last two, three, four committee meetings several topics of discussion that I think I would love to revisit. You did mention fingerprinting, onboarding of employees. We, we discussed a lot of irregularities that, we, that were determined at your office. And could we put that in, into your, I know you already submitted your work plan to us for the year, but could you find some time to go back in there, bring out those issues and just review them with the chief and give us a current update on where we had the question marks in those discussions? I don't, I'm, I'm being very global here because I have to be global, I don't remember. <laughs> but I do remember these issues coming up, okay? So if, if you could help with us sure. to get caught up to date and uh, it's a pleasure to finally see you here, uh, you and your staff. It's, so, it's, sorry it took a little while. <laughs> that's okay, you're here. That's all that yes. matters, you're here. But thank you for your time, thank you. Welcome. We are working together. Um, we do six month follow ups on all the audits. So we will come back and do a presentation on the background screening issue because it involves three different departments. And uh, Mr. J. Bog is the chief of staff is kind of overseeing that to coordinate the efforts. Mm -hmm. So we do have a presentation that we'll be bringing okay. with that. Uh, we also have the crisis response plan that what we're going to do for okay. that is we're starting a new audit because there's been so many legislative changes. We weren't able to, to continue the old audit with all the changes of personnel 
and the laws have changed, it, it's ridiculous because we have new rules now. So we're starting that. That's a new. That's on for this year. So again, we'll be working together. Okay. So that's it's great. definitely been a lot of cooperation. I know that Carrie is down in the police department more time than he is in our office. I'm starting to think that he might be in trouble. Yeah, it was a hall pass. You need to give him hall passes when he comes down. I we think can, he we just can comes down and him. visits. Okay. Yeah, we can re we can restrict him. Uh, so we can. We can definitely put that on the schedule to come back and give more of an update. Okay. I have one last question. Let me circle back to the 180 sites that you have both third party vendors and your own staff. Are, what, are they there from a certain time all day? They are there during the instructional periods, uh, during arrivals and then dismissals. So it's, it's average eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. So to make sure it's same as what our officers would be there. Um, I, I, I can't meant everybody, tell you. globally, everybody. Yeah. Uh, yes, and then we have, we have some officers. We have a Bravo ship that's just our officers that, that work kind of after hours. So if we have issues with, with kids going missing, maybe they got on the wrong bus and they need help getting tracked down, that kind of thing. We have, we have extra district police officers that are on duty um, until about 8 o'clock at night every night. Is there special training that you have to provide for that person? For the on-site being there on site, there special are, training. There are certain requirements with crisis intervention training and youth mental health. Um, so those those are things that we're working on, making sure that everybody has the qualifications to right. be at the schools. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments? Um, yeah. Mark? Uh, if, good morning. Uh, if, if I remember right, I, I believe one of the main issues was that the Certain processes, legality, have to be processed through law enforcement, and then HR, and then that information will be sent over to HR and vice versa. Um, it seems like th these issues are being addressed. If, if I remember right, th there was certain processes to where the two systems weren't always communicating with each other, and certain records were either not added or purged that needed to be required between the two. and. Um, I guess my question is just to make sure it's, that those issues are being addressed uh, currently. They, they are. I can tell you that one, one of the main things was the um, ensuring that every five years the fingerprinting has to be redone or you have to be, be resubmitted to make sure that everything's up to date. Um, they now have a very good process where they're monthly, the, the end of each month, last week of each month, they will, they will do a printout of all the employees in the district that are due for their five five-year annual renewal mm -hmm. and we have added staff that is able to go in and help make sure that those get resubmitted so we're up to date with those those current employees that need those five months they have a very good schedule um, and and they have the personnel in place that are working on that so I would say that piece is very good um, as far as the information that's coming in say on a new hire there's still some hiccups because the systems don't necessarily work together because they can't. So there is some manual, you know um, manual labor, so to speak, that comes into that, and you have to have specific people assigned to specific tasks to make sure that it gets done properly. Uh, as long as the information is inputted correctly into the PeopleSoft, the PeopleSoft system, um, it's it's gotten smoother with the 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 final stages of the onboarding process in regard to printing badges and, and having HR get their final sign-offs and getting, getting people started. Uh, I, I can say even within the last, uh, probably the last month or two, the, the amount of time that it takes to get somebody from application to hire has dramatically decreased. I, I'm not going to quote Erica Rieger's numbers, but I know that it's gone down significantly so that they're, they have a goal of trying to get people on board in, in about two weeks as opposed to a month and a half and just with the streamlining of some of the processes as I've seen it even since I've been here that's starting to work and those numbers are coming down so the systems are still kind of they're they're kind of legacy systems in a, in a, in a um, you know from as you look at them and and the whole people soft system you just got to make sure that the information going in there is correct the problem is is if you're off by one number on something it can throw the whole process but now we have people that know what they're looking for. So if there's a hiccup and we can hear from a person that we're onboarding or that is having an issue with access somewhere, they, they know what they're looking for now. So that we're working through some of those kinks. But I would say it's definitely better than the information that, I, that I've reviewed in the audit. Great. Sounds good. And I would yeah. just say that, you know, IT works closely also with school police. And there are just some limitations. And it's not 
district limitations, but it's through the FDLE. So we're trying to automate wherever we can, uh, but there are just some where they don't allow us to do that. Yeah, because so. if I remember right, that, that was the main issue was the, the two systems. Mm -hmm. They're uh, not, not completely inter integrated, but then but they couldn't. They can't, they can't le legally. Can't, can't right, be and that was that was the issue. So we're working yeah. through to, like I said, automate as, as much as we can. But there's yep. some where we just won't be able to, yep. and that's where we will have the the manual intervention and, and just having this the second checks in place to make sure it's entered correctly. Yep. Great. Well, okay. uh, I just have hey, two Andre. questions. You spoke of um, facility maintenance being under COO Sanchez. Mm -hmm. Is there a gap? Or do you? foresee, because you spoke very clearly about they're just not under my umbrella. Do you foresee a gap in something with the, with the systems, well, no, the security? Not the, the, no, I, I think we work hand in hand with them, but it's, it's, there's two very specific, like, not, and, and even with uh, Deputy Chief Snow. So we, we've kind of, we're, we're trying to put the lanes together a little bit, but the lanes all come together weekly. So we have security, weekly security meetings where all the people that are working on the safety and security plans um, for each of the uh, campuses come together and we have discussions on it. Now there are some things, they're, they're starting to outsource some of the projects that haven't been completed yet just because of lack of resources available readily here. Um, and I'm not talking about money. The, money. the money's there to do what they need to do, but you gotta have the bodies that are actually making sure that the projects are getting done correctly. So there's a few things that they're working on a little bit separate from us, but we have, um, we have uh, survey uh, officers that help do the surveys, the SEPTED surveys and the security surveys on each of the campuses, in addition to doing reviews of the FSAT security um, surveys that, that annually are done by personnel on the campus so that we can kind of see if there's, if, if there's issues that we're, that we're missing. But for the most part, I think everything's been identified. Now it's just working on prioritizing what really needs to be done as opposed to which ones we can get done quickest. So it's as far as trying to prioritize that, if it's a serious need, obviously we're going to get that done first. If it's something that's just um, could be better, which is something that we're always working towards, so that this is not a process that's ever going to be done, uh, especially from the facilities and maintenance standpoint with us, there's always room for improvement. So as soon as we get everybody, every school has been touched, we're going back and retouching them. So it's there, this won't ever be done. But the collaboration with the COO and his in, in the facilities and the maintenance personnel with the police, in addition to our security people, I think we're working very well together. Um, would we like to have everything done right now? Yes, absolutely. But, but like I said, I think you've got some pretty good minds working on it, and, and the processes seem to be working pretty smoothly. I think it's like building a road. You're always building roads. Absolutely. The, and the second question is, uh, how much of the information you're able to share considering the two audits in front of you. Um, I know we were scheduled, we were proposing to have a closed session, but I don't know how much of that can you share with us to date? The, um, which, which part, anything in particular? No, nothing in particular. Um, it, you gotta narrow it down for me. I gotta narrow it down for you. Let me help. Let me help with this for a minute. Open discussion here. Well, before we, what, just what, wait a minute, what I'm, what, let me. Yeah, point of information though, just, just to be very, careful here, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Um, you know, obviously we have certain considerations involving confidentiality and-, and, and Yeah, of course. Okay, of those course. type things. But, but that's what's gonna come back to us in the six month review, what we wanted to talk about. Correct. And then we'll reschedule it. Is that what you're talking mm -hmm. about? Yeah. Yes. Hey, we can't talk about that now. And, and there has been a proposal that's been made and we've spoken with general counsel's office and then the plans are once we have that information, it will be presented to the board during a closed session with, with school police. Right. Okay. Thought. Okay. Any other? Yeah, questions? I have one more thought. I'm going to take advantage of you, your presence here. <laughs> um, we have struggled as a committee. And I don't think anybody's going to object to this comment. That we've identified in the last three years, four years that we've been doing this, and I've been doing this, um, a lot of systems issues at the school district. S certain systems. There's a lot of improvement going on. As you venture into your role, and Heather's comment about limitations, I understand limitations, but I think the committee should know what the limitations are after you do this work of systems integration and what's talking, what's not, but you're willing to accept it. I'd like that to come back to the committee and say, yeah, we're willing to accept that also. Does that make sense? 
the Heather, especially for you? Yeah, it I, does, I like but when I say limitations, they're not our limitations. They're put on by the outside organizations that we're trying to interface with. That's fine. Yeah, so That's we're fine. doing everything that That's we fine. can, and, and yeah. And yeah. I didn't mean the school district's limitations, the system limitations that provides us not to move forward with a particular issue. I know, because sometimes when, when you do talk about the systems not being integrated, you know, I, I do take that to heart a little bit and take yeah. it personally because we yeah. have a very robust enterprise system and we have very strong system controls and we go through an IT audit every year from our external auditor, every three years from our auditor general, in addition to the inspector general's office. So I don't want people thinking we don't have controls. We do. It's more of those outside I, I apologize. Systems. I didn't mean it that strongly. Okay. <laughs> well, and like, and right, for the record, for the record, if you went through our minutes of our meetings, certain limitations were identified. Yes, okay. and, and, and we are trying to, like I said, <coughs> okay. minimize all of those. No I'm just, I'm raising it because the chief is here, and as she moves through with this new systems, all these systems we have, you have to understand what we're dealing with as a committee. That's all. We are looking at doing a risk acceptance on any issues that are either past or cannot be or just not worth, you know, the juices are worth the squeeze. Right. And I want to make right. sure that that's communicated to the board because um, the board is the one that makes the final decision on anything. And we will communicate all that to the, to the committee. That's fine. Most Thank definitely. you. Thank you very much. Right. And, and like I was talking about, the, I, if I remember right, the main issues between the, the, the school board and, and the, the school board uh, police department, the integration is just not going to happen. It, like we were talking about, it's, it's just legally you can't, you can't well, do that's it. That's fine. If it stops legally, that's fine. We're happy with that. That's a great answer. Okay. Any other uh, comments or questions of the chief? Sir, Chief Moody, thank you for coming. Uh, I know how busy you are, but we appreciate it and appreciate you bringing Vanessa and your staff with you. Uh, and uh, we welcome you anytime you have a spare moment. Yes, I, no, <laughs> I know I that won't happen. I, I appreciate having having the opportunity to come in. Um, you know, like I said, is any time that you need input for what we're doing, whatever I can share. I, I mean, that's that's part of. Uh, trying to make things work is, is you got to talk about them and be transparent about them and, and I welcome the opportunity to make corrections where we need to and that's what we're working on so it, it's it, it is a beast I'll tell you that there's a there's a lot of moving parts and and I have I feel like I've got good support in regard to what we're trying to address and I've got good people that are working on the various things that have been identified um, and then moving forward we'll you know like I said is it's always an ongoing process that we're never going to be done so I, I welcome the feedback good well, I personally feel that the district is very fortunate to have uh, put you on board and, and surround you surround yourself with good people. So uh, keep up the good work and thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, next uh, we'll go to the uh, update of the internal funds audit. Terry, do you want to just touch base on that? I'm going to turn that over to the director of uh, audit, Randy Law. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we are still uh, on track to finish all the field works uh, sometime by mid uh, early March, and hopefully we will have the final report uh, ready for this committee by April. So uh, nothing else uh, unusual as of today now. All the schools are completed. We now complete about five, uh, 50 schools so far out of the 174, and all the findings are very similar to prior years. Nothing new or exceptional up until now. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, next is the uh, update of the, inter I'm sorry, the contract and procurement activities quarterly report as of September 30th. Terry? Yes, again, we have the quarterly report of all the procurement um, from the CORC on to RFPs and ITNs. Um, Robert Bliss is here if anybody has any questions on the quarterly report, but as of right now, we don't have anything that has initiated an investigation or audit. We are bringing them in on a couple of um, investigations that we have ongoing that have a high um, RFP or contract element. So I'm going to pair up our investigator with the contract specialist. So to use both of those. So, uh, Mr. Chair, I did have a question. It's going to go back to the um, internal funds audit. And you say you've audited 50 schools. Has anything stuck out 
that would lead to um, an investigation of those 50 schools? No. That's, that's, that's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> Thank you. The qualify, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Right. We're still we're still only a quarter way through, and as we do that, that is something that there's a constant communication. Okay. That um, whenever they find something, and I review each one of the the school reports, and we look at that, and you know, Director Law is very quick to come in and say, uh, "I want this to go to, to investigations." They're they're very good at passing things back and forth to each other. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Are there any any questions? If not, I'll accept a motion to approve the report. I'll make a motion to accept the report. Yeah, Leandre second. Good. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Passed unanimously. Okay. Uh, next is just an FYI that shows the three investigative reports that are they're still underway. Is that correct? No, they're completed. They're just for the FYI for acceptance by the the audit committee okay so i'll ask for uh, a motion to accept these investigative reports as shown leandre makes the motion i second discussion all in favor aye, aye. all opposed aye. passed unanimously okay are there any uh, any general comments Hearing none again, Chief Mooney, thank you so much for, for you coming. And uh, our next meeting is scheduled for Friday, November 18th. And if there's no further business, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>